Plastic pollution has emerged as one of the most pressing environmental challenges of our time. Do you agree, Gabby? To put it into perspective, over 8 billion tons of plastic waste have been generated since the 1950s. Unfortunately, recycling efforts have not been able to keep pace with the growing demand for plastics. A significant portion of this waste ends up in landfills or polluting our oceans, posing severe risks to ecosystems and marine life. You're absolutely right, Jason. But there is growing awareness about the detrimental effects of plastic pollution. A large segment of the global community is now actively taking steps to reduce plastic waste. Many individuals and organizations are also working to responsibly collect waste plastics from various environments, such as beaches and waterways, as part of cleanup initiatives. That's an excellent point, Gabby. While sorting and collecting plastic waste separately is a crucial first step, it only addresses part of the problem. The larger question lies in managing the vast quantities of plastic waste that are being collected. It's not just about accumulating the waste, but finding effective solutions for its disposal or reuse. Exactly, Jason. That's where the concept of a circular economy for plastics comes into play. It has gained significant attention in recent years, focusing on creating systems to recycle and repurpose plastic waste. Multiple innovative technologies are currently being employed to process and reuse plastic, turning waste into new products or materials. Speaking of innovations, I recently came across research on plastic-eating worms. It's fascinating to think that biological processes could potentially contribute to addressing this massive issue. Worms, Jason? That's definitely not the first thing that comes to mind when we think about tackling plastic waste. But you're right. Our reset research has uncovered something fascinating. Certain species of worms, like waxworms, mealworms, and superworms, are showing the ability to degrade plastic. It's an incredible intersection of biology and environmental science. It's fascinating how these worms work. They essentially alter the properties of the plastic, breaking its molecular structure. Over time, this reduces the plastic's mass and even its molecular weight. Gabby, do you know about the discovery of these worms that can help tackle plastic waste? Let's begin with waxworms. Their ability to consume plastic is groundbreaking and could have major implications for how we address plastic pollution. Sure, Jason. The discovery of waxworms' plastic-eating abilities is truly fascinating. It all started in 2017 when a researcher at the Spanish National Research Council made the discovery by accident. She was cleaning out beehives and placed some waxworms, which are pests that typically feed on beeswax, into a plastic bag. To her surprise, the worms quickly chewed holes through the bag. That's an amazing story. The fact that this breakthrough came from a chance observation makes it even more remarkable. But how exactly were these waxworms able to break down the plastic? Was it a purely mechanical process, or was there something more complex at play? Well, the researcher at the Spanish National Research Council teamed up with researchers from the University of Cambridge to dig deeper. They discovered that waxworms can biodegrade polyethylene, which is a common type of plastic found in things like shopping bags. The magic lies in their saliva, which contains enzymes capable of breaking down the plastic into ethylene glycol, a compound that biodegrades quickly. In fact, 100 waxworms can consume 0.1 grams of polyethylene in just 12 hours. That's incredible, Gabby. It's mind-blowing to think that such a small creature could hold the key to solving a major environmental challenge. This research not only reveals a natural way of degrading plastics, but also opens up new possibilities for developing enzyme-based solutions. These enzymes could be scaled up and adapted for industrial use. The implications for waste management and recycling systems are huge. Definitely. Scientists are now isolating and studying the enzymes in waxworm saliva to create scalable methods for degrading plastics. It's an exciting glimpse into how nature could help us solve the plastic pollution crisis. That's inspiring to hear. I know waxworms aren't the only ones with this ability. What's the story behind mealworms? I know that mealworms eat and partially break down polystyrene the material used in styrofoam, cups, packaging, and insulation. Mealworms actually made headlines a bit earlier, in 2015, 
A team of researchers at Stanford University discovered that mealworms can eat and digest polystyrene, the plastic used in products like styrofoam. Their digestive process, aided by gut bacteria, breaks the plastic down into carbon dioxide and biodegradable waste. That's fascinating. Similar to the waxworms, but with a different mechanism. Do we have any data on how much plastic mealworms can consume and what happens to the waste they produce? About 100 mealworms can eat 34 to 39 milligrams of polystyrene daily. Even better, the waste they produce is safe and can be used as compost for growing crops. This means mealworms offer a promising way to reduce plastic waste without introducing harmful byproducts. That's really encouraging. It's not just mealworms. Superworms, which are essentially larger cousins of mealworms, have also demonstrated the ability to handle greater amounts of plastic. Superworms, or Zophobus morio, came into focus in 2022. Researchers at the University of Queensland discovered that these worms could survive for weeks on a diet of polystyrene alone and even gain weight from it. That's amazing. Do we know how they managed to do that? Yes, it's all thanks to their gut bacteria. Using metagenomic analysis, researchers identified specific bacterial genera, such as Pseudomonas and Rhodococcus, that produce enzymes capable of breaking down polystyrene. This finding has huge potential for developing biotechnological solutions, as these enzymes could be used for large-scale plastic recycling or upcycling. Gaby, while this research is promising, it's important to set realistic expectations. Plastic-eating worms aren't a magic bullet for plastic pollution. You're absolutely right, Jason. These worms can't survive on plastic alone. Studies show that when mealworms are fed a diet of pure polystyrene, their survival rates decrease. Adding a co-feed, like bran or other nutrient-rich material, improves both their health and their plastic consumption rates. It's a delicate balance. And then there's the issue of scaling up. Even though these worms can degrade plastic, they do so very slowly. Imagine trying to use them to process the millions of tons of plastic waste we produce every year. It's just not feasible. I completely agree to that, Jason. The next big step is understanding the bacteria and enzymes in the worm's guts that enable this process. Scientists are studying the metabolic pathways involved. Essentially, how the bacteria chemically break down the plastic. By identifying the specific enzymes responsible, we could potentially replicate or even engineer them for large-scale use. That's an exciting prospect. Instead of relying on the worms themselves, we could develop engineered microbial systems or bioreactors that mimic their digestive processes. Imagine a facility where these bacteria break down plastics into harmless byproducts much faster than the worms ever could. But Gabby, even with all this potential, it's crucial to remember that these solutions are still in the experimental phase. Scaling up these processes will take time, resources, and collaboration across multiple disciplines – biology, chemistry, engineering, and even policymaking. Exactly, Jason. And we also need to study the long-term effects. For example, what happens to the byproducts of plastic degradation in these worms? Are there any unintended consequences for ecosystems or food chains if this process is implemented on a larger scale? It's a complex problem, but what excites me most is how these discoveries show us that solutions can come from unexpected places. Who would have thought that worms, tiny, unassuming creatures, might hold the key to tackling one of humanity's biggest environmental challenges? It's a powerful reminder of how interconnected we are with the natural world. These worms aren't the ultimate solution, but they're an important piece of the puzzle. Combined with efforts to reduce plastic use, improve recycling technologies, and develop biodegradable materials, they could help us move toward a more sustainable future. And that's the takeaway here. Plastic-eating worms are fascinating and offer real promise, but solving plastic pollution will require a multifaceted approach. It's about combining science, innovation, and policy to make meaningful progress. Absolutely, Jason. It's an inspiring field of research, and I can't wait to see where it leads. The journey to solving plastic pollution is a long one, but every discovery brings us closer to a cleaner, more sustainable planet.